Now it's time to go and edit our configuration PHP file. In cPanel, you can actually select the configuration PHP file and go to the code editor. They'll bring up a new tab with your configuration PHP file. It can be useful to use an existing configuration file from another site so that you can uh, use it as an example. In this case, for instance, I can go to one of my internal sites and uh, take it from there so that I can use it to copy and paste some of the some of the value. For instance, I'll use this one. This is my sample configuration file. But let's first take the easy stuff. For instance, the user. We know that the user is Contio 6 local VM in this case. So we can just go here and find the user which was previously root and paste Contio 6. The password used to be nothing because your local host doesn't need anything there. So we just have to put the password. Always be very careful not to delete or overwrite the single quotes here. You do that and your site will never work. Localhost is correct. The next thing to edit is the log path and the temp path. That's one of the things that we can use by going here and copying it. In fact, we can copy the entire two lines and paste them here in place of what we had before. And now the only thing that we had to add is local VM. And we do it by just copying and pasting in here. So now your path is correct. It's always good to give it another check and make sure that everything is correct. If you want to change your meta description, meta keyword, this is the place to do it. Everything else seems correct here. And we can just go ahead and uh, click on save. Now there is always a chance that I didn't do something correctly so far. And in fact, at this point, if you notice, I've not uploaded the database. So if I try going to my site, I'll probably get all kind of errors. There it is. That's because there is a database, but there is no data in the database. In order to get my data, I have to go to my local PHP my admin, my local VM, and go to export. Make sure that all these tables are selected. Choose SQL, click on Save as File, and use Gzip. Click on Go. And Chrome here has downloaded my file. Let's uh, open the folder. And it downloaded in local VM. In fact, it downloaded twice. I was getting impatient. So let me copy the path there again. Now let's go back to our server. We don't need this anymore. We copied what we needed. And uh, let's go to the PHP My Admin. Now this is the remote PHP My Admin. We choose the local VM site, go to import, choose a file, again, we paste the path there. I'm all for uh, saving a few seconds here and there, and open. And now it's just a matter of waiting after you click go, of course, for the site to upload. And there it is. Wow, no magic there. It did it that fast. So let's go check out our site now and see if everything works. It's possible that it doesn't. It's very easy to miss something, even something silly. Let's refresh here and I can see from this error that I did miss something because this is not the usual error that happens when you don't have data in the database. I didn't see that before. I was too busy recording this. But it says there is something wrong on line 67. So let's go back to the configuration file and let's go to line 67. Line 67 is fine. So let's look at the line before that. And sure enough, there it is. I missed a semicolon. Let's save changes. Let's come here and refresh. And there it is. That's our site live. Now, if you have VirtuMart in your website, and this is why I chose a site with VirtuMart already installed in it, you're not done. You still have some work to do. Let me copy this. It'll come in handy later. And let's go back to our installation. Now, VirtuMart has its own configuration file. And that's what we need to edit now for VirtuMart to work. Otherwise, if I go to the products, for instance, 
it takes me right back to localhost. Why is that? That's because the virtualmark configuration file has not been touched yet. In cPanel file manager, we click on administrator, components, com virtualmark, and we look for the virtualmark configuration PHP, CFG PHP. Like we did before, we select it and click on the code editor and we look for our path, which is right here. And we paste the path from that I copied before and we paste the same on the secure URL. Even though if you do have a, an SSL, you should put HTTPS over here. Now we can save changes. Oh, and before we go any further, let me show you something that is very important that everybody misses. You need a trailing backslash. This is very important. You miss that and your virtual mark is gonna go nuts on you. And now let's refresh this. And looks like we are fine now. Click on the iPhone and we are on my anyway, site, this concludes the screencast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you know how to move websites from your local installation to a remote server. As you can see, it's not very difficult. There are some steps. If you go to my website, in the article for this screencast, I will uh, uh, publish a checklist on things to look for and how to do it. So you can print a checklist or copy paste it somewhere and use it for your own until you get the flow of it. It's very easy to forget something or do things out of order. So using a checklist for the first few times, it's actually a very nice habit. I find that the more you have a, some sort of structure when you work with Joomla especially, but when you do web design in general, whenever you have a structure and you follow it, things get easier. It might take you 10 seconds, 15 seconds more, for instance, to name your files properly or to put a date or to create the folder structure that you need. But you're going to save that time later on in time wasted looking for passwords, looking for files, uh, not recognizing the files or uploading an older version of the database ver versus a, a newer version and so on and so forth. So take your time. Joomla is really not that difficult. Is it really not that more difficult than creating static websites? In fact, I'd venture to say that once you know the basics of Joomla or WordPress, Drupal, any of those scripts, building static websites will seem cumbersome to you compared to the power that you have with Joomla, with the self-contained nature of Joomla, with the open structure in Joomla that allows you to add things with the click of the mouse almost. Remember also that uh, at Conti Creative, we offer one-on-one -on -one training. How does that work? In one-on-one -on -one training, we connect with you using GoToMeeting. So you can see my screen, I can see your screen, and uh, it's a much nicer way to learn. We don't have to crowd around the same computer. And I can take you step by step, depending on your level of knowledge. There isn't a one size fit all training. If you are a website owner, you don't care about learning the, about the intricacies of Joomla template development. We won't touch on that ex except in passing. If you are a web developer and you need to know how to build templates in Joomla, then that's something you want to spend more time on. So I usually customize my training for the student. I also will start teaching my Dreamweaver Joomla method. And uh, as you might or might not know, some time ago I developed a system on uh, how to develop Joomla sites using Dreamweaver. And uh, it's a much faster method than anything I've ever used. Of course, I use Dreamweaver in a very unorthodox way. The Adobe people, the Micromedia people, probably never thought of using it that way, but it works very well. It makes working with Joomla a lot faster than any other method I've tried. And believe me, I tried almost all of them. So this concludes this episode of 10 Minute Joomla Tips. I hope it helps you in your work and uh, we'll see you the next screencast. Thank you very much for watching.